the absolute reverse of Scripture, and then feel safe under their delusion that they're okay with God. But their doom is summarized in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 9 through 12, where it talks about the coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan with all power, signs, and lying wonders. Everything. The, 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 re the rhetoric and the wisdom and the signs and the dream, all that stuff. And with all unrighteous deception among those who perish, why they perish? Because they did not receive a love of the truth that they might be saved by it. That's why. They won't hear the truth. Try going into the, into the system of error that Babylon in preaching that they have full, complete ability to obey God and take up their cross and they better do that or perish. You find out they do not receive a love of the truth. And for this reason, God will send them strong delusion that they should believe the lie, the lie, that they may be condemned who did not believe the truth but took pleasure in unrighteousness. The lie. What is that lie? See, that explains the whole fallacy that they've fallen prey to. The different spirits preaching that different gospel in all these different ways. See, in Scripture, lawlessness is transgression. Like in 1 John 3, 4, that he who, transgre he who commits sin commits transgression. It's transgression of the law. You transgress the doctrine of Christ, like 2 John we talked about in the other message about to show us a sign. They transgress the doctrine of Christ, the doctrine of take up your cross and obey God. And then they succumb to the lying signs and wonders, and then they have this received not a love of the truth that could save them out of this lie, and they believe the lie, taking pleasure in their unrighteous deceptions, and they perish in their sins, loving every step of the way down that wide road to destruction. While the savage wolves that they think are their friends and love them so much that appear as lambs and harmless people preach this doctrine of demons to them in, the, in, the, on, in every side and every flavor in the church whether it's the the signs and the manifestations and the dreams and the visions and they clamor for whatever it is or just listening to that rhetoric to persuade them they can be saved in their sins because God loves them so much well, God's love does not rejoice in iniquity and if you're living in sin, there's no rejoicing in that from God. You don't have His approval. You have His patience and long-suffering waiting for you to repent because He's not willing and He should perish but all come to repentance. But you certainly don't have His approval. It rains on the good and bad. The sun shines on everybody. But it doesn't mean God approves of all your actions. So what is the lie? What is it? What is exchanging the truth of God for a lie and suppressing that truth? What is it, these doctrine of demons? Well, I say it's every preacher and every pundit and every showman and charlatan, every Ph.D. pastor, every pastor, every Sunday school teacher and Bible study leader, and every blog and website and radio and TV show, and every mission and outreach and camp meeting and concert and crusade and stadiums filled up with people, and every sign, dream, vision, manifestation, all underscored with the preaching of human inability, depravity, substitution in any form, alternatives to repentance proven by deeds, faith alone, repeat after me in the finished work of Jesus Christ and the moral transfer that you're saved in your sins. That's what I say the lie is. All balled up into one great big monster in the Babylonian system that you have to come out from or you're going to perish with them. All this is expressed by John in 1 John 5.19, the God of this age who holds the whole world under his sway. And again said in 2 Corinthians 4, verses 3 and 4, but see, if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing, whose mind the God of this age has blinded, that they do not believe, lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ should, the image of God should shine on them. So they will not believe what we say. They will not believe what the words of Jesus Christ that we're quoting. It's not our gospel. We didn't invent it. This is what Jesus taught. He taught that you have ability to love Him with all your strength, all your might, all your mind and heart. You do so by coming to Him in broken repentance. You've been living in sin and degradation and under all these lies. And give yourself over to His Spirit 
to be a self-cleansing humility of repentance so that He can regenerate you and fill a vessel that's fit for the Master's use with the Spirit to be raised to that newness of life. Not a filthy, wretched man, substitution, faith alone, depravity, and all that other stuff. Those things are the lie. The lie that they believe the lie, says the Second Thessalonians, right? The lie. Whether it comes to you in dreams or in visions or in manifestations, lights, special things that you think happened to you, some inclination that you got secretly, some little voice you might have heard, are the doctrines of demons by these millions of pundits out there in the world today pumping this stuff out 24-7. Whatever it is, whatever it is, You've fallen for a different gospel in a different spirit, the spirit of error. See, remember that the spirit of error is not just a thought or a, an, an error in intellectual philosophies. No, a spirit is a spirit of error. The spirits, the angel from heaven, remember, what were the demons before they were fallen? They were angels. All right? The scriptures teach us, you probably all know that. Spirits of error, preaching doctrines of demons that sear your conscience with a hot iron, make you impervious to the truth because you go into a debased mind like we showed in our progression of depravity lesson. And it all boils down to you love your sin. So you love it. Just like I said, you love every step of the way down a wide road to destruction. See, the many people, the majority, that set in mega churches that they're building right down the street here in my town, in your town too, and everywhere else you go, <coughs> they've got all these mega huge churches with tens of thousands of people. Like all these liars out there today, like Joel Steen and all these uh, prosperity preachers, and motivational this and motivational that. It's nothing to do with bringing people out of their depravity. They just keep sinking lower and lower into depravity and our nation's being given over to demons and death and destruction. And the reason it's happening is because you're asleep in your sins. You're like Laodicea personified. Wretched, miserable, poor, blind, naked. Christ is excluded. He spewed you out of His mouth a long time ago if you were ever there to begin with. But he stands at the door and knocks. And anyone that opens that door, anyone that comes to him on his terms, through a self-cleansing, broken humility, through his spirit, his gospel, will find that truth in that light. And it will no longer be hidden or veiled, like he said there. Then that light of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, will shine through this mess. And you'll be able to find the truth, the solid foundation, rock of Christ. Stand on it and build upon it so you can endure to the end in this mess. And it's going to get a lot worse, folks. A lot worse. So you better find that truth and come out of this mess and quit mimicking all this stuff that came out of the mouths of demons into the minds of these pundits throughout the ages. Starting back in 4th century Rome with the spawn of Satan himself, Mr. Augustine. So which spirit will you hear? The spirit of truth? That those who hear God, those who know God, they hear the spirit of truth, they love God, they keep His commandments, or the spirit of error? Through all these different avenues that it comes to invade your mind and your soul and your heart with one inevitable conclusion to take you to perdition in the end. That's the lawlessness that's hit this generation. That's what he said, the, the spirit of lawlessness, like he said in 2 Thessalonians. It's not Antichrist. It's not some kind of rapture. It's not some kind of movie here. We're talking about the spirit of lawlessness, the God of this age, holds the world in his sway. That spirit, sending out his minions among all these pundits preaching these things, that they're deceived by. Remember it says in Timothy where it describes the people that have a form of godliness but no power of a godly life. It talks about those minions going about and going worse and getting worse, deceiving and being deceived. In other words, they deceive themselves and they deceive others. But they both end up in the same place, in perdition.
in the end. So that's the choice that's laid before you. Life and death, blessing and cursings, light and darkness, wickedness or righteousness. I say choose life.